First of all, I want to welcome everybody to, uh, to this uh, beautiful celebration of Veterans Day. We're streaming live here in New York City at the historic Soldier Sailors, Airmen and Marines Club, uh, a fantastic institution. We'll hear more about it later. We we're able to have some great seminars here. One was hosted by uh, Joe Rojas, who serves on the Chamber of Commerce Technology Committee. And today we're gonna to learn more about the, the new program that we have with the US Veterans Chamber of Commerce, helping to create the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And uh, the truth be told, we've uh, already made a, uh, uh, an agreement uh, to partner and help soldier sailors and restore this beautiful facility and expand its service reach right here in the uh, metropolitan area. Before we get into some uh, more programming and uh, the who's and what's, I'd like to introduce Miss Sweet, who's brought her beautiful granddaughter, Ava, and they're going to start us off with a patriotic song. very much. So I'm Mark Jaffe. I'm the president and CEO of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, I've been asked to help launch. I'm a special advisor and one of the founding uh, board members of the new New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce, which is an affiliate of the U.S. Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We have a couple of great uh, people we're going to introduce. But first, I want to introduce Two of my favorite people, again, Joe Rojas, who serves on our technology committee and is a specialist in the Army. He led the entrepreneurial boot camp, which uh, was streaming live from New York, but will also be on our Chamber TV in the video, chamber.nyc. Uh, and we're helping veterans learn skills, develop mental skills, uh, networking and mentoring, business and legal skills, helping entrepreneurs and small businesses transition, get jobs, and grow. So I want to bring Joe uh, from Reb St. Miriam's group up. And at the same time, I'm gonna bring up, uh, no particular order here, uh, but Colonel Terry Holiday. he's retired uh, from the Air Force and he serves on the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. And he's also agreed to be a founding board member of the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce, the new affiliate of the US Veterans Chamber of Commerce. So Joe, would you like to say a few words? Sure. So first, thank you, Mark, and thank you for doing this. Welcome all. Thank you for your service all. Um, for me, the, the, the U.S. Army was, you know, I was in the U.S. Army National Guard, and it was a life-changing experience, right? I quit school when I was 11 years old. I started my first company when I was 17. I, I did that for a while, but I was, I had a hard life. And then when I turned 19, Desert Shield turned to Desert Storm, and I joined the U.S. Army. I joined the U.S. Army National Guard. I got my GD. I went into the U.S. Army National Guard, and I got trained as a special devices electronic repair technician, right? And I reached the amazing rank of specialist, right, <laughs> an E4. And although I didn't get to this high, crazy rank and all that stuff, 
after nine years into service, I got out and I started my first IT company with all the training that I got in the US Army. And I built four multi-million dollar companies with the training that I got in the US Army. And that's all the training that I've ever got. I don't have any other certifications or anything else. And I, I can't tell you how that transformed my life and how amazing my life has been because of that. So, uh, you know, after running IT companies for a while, I've become a business coach now. I opened a different company. I wrote a book. I'm writing another book. Life is amazing. But if it weren't for the U.S. Army National Guard, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm clear about that. And I'm sure that that's the way it is for many of you. So it's time for us to, to stand up for all our service members and really help them really be all that they can be in the world, in the world of business, in their lives, everywhere we can. So that's that's what I got. With that said, you got it? You go. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Terry Holliday. Um, I'm a New York native. I lived here when the Knicks were great, when the Yankees were great. And I'm where we are. I was here with, I even had a drink with Joe Namath once at Bachelors Three. I can't, I can tell you. Um, I, I think we bring different experiences to where we are. And I think the core of a lot of things that I did was what I did in the military. Uh, I was in the public affairs career field. And particularly after 9-11, I got involved in some things that sort of opened up different doors for me. And I got into government with City Hall. Um, I felt that I had an obligation growing up as a, a, an African-American in New York City, um, based with my experiences growing up in this country in the 1960s. I graduated from St. John's University and I got a graduate degree from New York Institute of Technology. And life is sort of tough. And um, it wasn't tough for me personally, but in terms of growing up in the competition for jobs, there was always that glass ceiling. And that glass ceiling is being broken, has been broken all over the place. Um, I don't know if you saw that movie, Captain Phillips. Captain, Captain Phillips, and you, you heard that voice on the phone when they were closing in on the terrorists to take them out. Okay, just go ahead. Uh, it was a four star, she, she had four stars. She was, the vice she was the vice commander of the Navy, vice chief of staff. You forget her last name because it just came, Nora something or the other, she's retired now. But four stars, okay, and she was the vice sink. Uh, I think the Air Force has two four stars. And in case you don't know, the star is important, but four stars mean that's as high as you can go. You know, and so you've got two of them that are up there. Um, I think that as a comparison, I think I would like to point to Vice President-elect Harris. She stands for what a lot of people never thought they could be, all right? And there are a lot of, there, that means a lot. Uh, in the jobs that I've had in the Air Force, I've been with four-star generals. I've been with secretaries, okay? One time I, uh, I'm not gonna go on, I'm just gonna, <laughs> one, I was working in DC, I think I was, a, I was a Lieutenant Colonel at the time, and I was the uh, communications advisor to the Secretary of the Air Force. We went to, uh, uh, the Secretary had to, had to appear at a breakfast, he was talking at a breakfast on Capitol Hill, so I had to be a half an hour ahead of the guy, and you know, I'm there. They were running slow, he was coming in, and John McCain was supposed to speak in front of him. McCain was early, okay? And at this time, there was a big uh, discussion, argument actually going on between the follow-on tanker for the KC-135, and McCain was on one side and my boss was on the other. And I see McCain, uh, Senator McCain walking up, and he's walking up to me. And I said, oh God, what am I supposed to do? I can't run away from the guy, I didn't know what to say. And he came up, he talked to me for about a half an hour. Okay, he had no place to go, I had no place to go. But I was tongue-tied just listening to this man. He's great, he was a POW, he was a Medal of Honor winner, and he was inspiring. Um, that may be not as great as some of the other scenarios that I've been in in my life, 
but I owe it all to the Air Force. I owe it all to the skills that they gave me, the opportunities that they gave me uh, to manage, to supervise, to advise leaders. And when we take a look at some of the things that we're trying to encourage uh, members of the military as they're transitioning, we, we want to teach them those leadership skills, how to lead, how to do all that. Maybe take over the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. I don't know. <laughs> okay, boss. Uh, Sorry. Oh, Terry, thank you very much, Terry. Your words are always insight insightful. And let me tell you something about Terry. He's one of the hardest working men. Retirement's not in his blood, even though he's officially or reminds me um, Air Force retired. Yeah. And I think we got that right. So moving right along, uh, another retired hero, we have uh, Captain McShane. Did I get that right? Captain McShane from the United States Marine, retired. But again, he's not retired. He runs this beautiful Soldier Sailors Airmen's Club as the top dog on the executive board. And he's gonna tell you a little bit about it. We're so proud to be streaming live here from New York City at this historic institution, which uh, aims to serve our veterans and people in the military. And it's been doing it for over a hundred years. And uh, with the help of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce and the people out there listening, uh, this year is tough because of COVID. We, we couldn't do our active uh, fundraiser, the ball, uh, but we're gonna start getting donations and, and putting more, more services and more floors onto this beautiful institution. Captain McShane. Yes, Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you everyone for showing up this afternoon. The Soldiers, Sailors, Marines, Coast Guard and Airmen's Club has been here since 1919. It was organized by Mrs. Cornelius Barnes Rogers, Mrs. Theodore Roosevelt Jr and John Blackjack Pershing following World War I. As you know, after the armistice was declared in 1918, most of the troops did not start to return back to New York and the United States until 1919. In fact, a large portion of the expeditionary force remained in Germany as occupation forces into the 1920s. However, in 1919, these troop ships began arriving in New York Harbor and there was no place for these troops to be. And so Mrs. Rogers, Mrs. Theodore Rod, uh, Roosevelt Jr. and General Pershing had this idea to organize a club to serve the needs of our men and women. So we have been here since 1919, serving, them, serving those who serve us, first responders, military, retired, and our allies. So we are 5013C. We receive no government funding whatsoever and we are like Blanche de Bois, we are dependent upon the kindness of strangers. So we have a GoFundMe page out there. If you wanna to go to the www.ssmac.org, take a look, see if you might be able to find a few shekels that could find our way to preserve this wonderful institution that continues to serve as we move into our next 100 years. Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. What a beautiful day, a solemn day. And I personally want to thank all the veterans uh, that have served and all our troops, first responders, keeping us safe uh, in this global pandemic. So as you saw, Miss Sweet's granddaughter can stand on her own two feet. Uh, we like to joke here that we have a new vice commander in chief Kamala Harris, and her family calls her Mamala. Very important that we honor the women in the service and we honor women in business. And, and I guess uh, that'll allow me to introduce our, our next couple of guests here. Uh, if, if you wanna come up from the US Veterans Chamber of Commerce, I believe we have Adrian Guglielmo and Wayne Petro. We were able, uh, and we've known each other for years, uh, I got involved with these fantastic group of people uh, post 9-11. I was asked um, to, the, to, the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce was asked to help get supplies down to ground zero. So we were in Midtown, it wasn't as isolated. Um, right near the Empire State Building, we were able to store uh, items. 
and we were able to take them down to the historic 1010 firehouse on Liberty Street, the last building standing when the uh, towers went down. And uh, I think a year later, one year later, we decided to host a uh, thank you party at Lincoln Center, not only for the first responders of fire and NYPD working on the pile, but all the National Guard and we got involved with the military we got more involved with the United War Veterans, which hosts a parade every year, a parade in New York City, up and down Fifth Avenue. And um, we're here today. And again, please uh, keep your phones on, on uh, vibrate because we're streaming live. So we're here today to announce a historic partnership. The Greater New York Chamber of Commerce, which serves over 30,000 business and civic leaders, has many, many programs. You can see them all at chamber.nyc. That's the official New York City domain. You can call our offices at 212 Chamber if you want to learn more about the seminars. I want to uh, thank the Save a Suit people that will be uh, part of the program later for uh, getting 14,000 uh, clothing online in different sizes. It's catalog, Save a Suit. Uh, so we're helping to transition veterans to get jobs and we want them to look the part depending on what job they're going for. Um, so we were approached by Adrian Guglielmo and her great uh, um, team at the US Veterans Chamber of Commerce to help lead the way with the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And we're announcing that here live in New York today on Veterans Day 2020. So without much further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend, my mentor, my heroine, Adrian Guglielmo. Hi, uh, my name is Adrian Guillermo. I am also a native New Yorker. Uh, I was born in Brooklyn and uh, was raised on Long Island and now live in Forest Hills, Queens. Um, I, uh, uh, on 9-11, I was married to a New York City homicide detective and he was the second detective on the scene. Uh, along with a first cousin by the name of Scott Davidson, who was the last firehouse on the scene. Um, there's a very famous picture, I think, on the New York Post where you see a fire truck going through the towers. That was Scott's fire truck. Um, I both lost my husband that day mentally, as well as my first cousin uh, died uh, pulling people out of the Marriott Hotel. It was the day I discovered uh, what first responders were all about, as well as the fact that um, uh, uh, post-traumatic stress, what that truly was. I then devoted everything after that to working with veterans. So I, I actually worked with soldiers sales um, to raise money with Ivan Obolensky. Uh, I was in charge of raising all the sponsorships uh, for the lead sponsorships for the Veterans Day Parade. And I also brought in uh, with the Achilles Club all the sponsors for disabled people to run in the New York City Marathon. So, you know, a true New Yorker. Stayed in New York, met wonderful people like Terry, met my new husband on the parade, a Marine, Brian Foley. Uh, I also have a son who... Um, uh, serves in my oldest son serves in the military now. Uh, I met people like Wayne Petro, who's uh, from Geico, who's now working with me. But the idea was that we would set up chambers throughout the United States, run by veteran businesses. We would bring our corporate um, uh, people in for them to do business with. Uh, as we did, we brought Geico in to do business with this chamber to start. And we would then, anybody in the community that was a veteran that needed help, we would then treat them by bringing them into a safe place like the chamber uh, on a holistic approach. Education, employment, business, family, and wellness. Uh, just to give New York some good news, uh, we are working on bringing the Invictus Games here for 2025 which will bring in 19 nations and, and the, uh, the Duke and Duchess, Harry and Matt, Megan. And I think it'll bring a sense of tourism back to New York after what's going on with COVID. 
So um, that's what we're working on with the uh, Invictus. We're also working on getting the Warrior Games uh, for the Department of Defense to be in charge of them for the next five years. Um, one of our biggest partners, next to Geico, is the NFL. And Terry talked about Joe Namath. Well, Joe Namath was kind enough to host an event for us two years ago where we had about 150 wounded, ill, and injured at the Marriott out on Long Island. Um, but the chambers are here so we could bring to you to do business with. Uh, we will bring in uh, mentors. We will bring in programs. Uh, we have Damon John, who's a very famous New Yorker from Shark Tank. He's now involved with us. And he has an entrepreneur program that you guys would, anybody's in business would love. Uh, we have Dale Carnegie, another New Yorker. Uh, they're discounting veterans from $2,500 uh, to, uh, I think it's $188 for their program. So the chamber is going to bring in a lot of different programs for you. Uh, the person that I chose and, uh, uh, to run the chambers is right here. His name is Wayne Petro. Wayne ran the military program for all of Geico nationwide. Who better to run our uh, chamber program nationwide than Wayne? Um, on our board, we have uh, but, uh, Paul Buca, who's a very famous uh, Connecticut guy, but hangs out in New York. He's our chairman of our board. We have a wonderful Long Islander who now lives in Connecticut named Scott Higgins, who's on our board. We have the, uh, a big portion of the BBA, Rick Weidman on our board. Uh, we have so many, uh, um, we have Johnson & Johnson on our board. We have UPS. We have Aetna CVS on our board. Uh, we have so many wonderful people on our board, but uh, right now I'm gonna introduce you to my favorite person, and this is on television, right? All right, I'm gonna get in trouble, but Wayne will stop at nothing to help chambers. He will stop at nothing to help individuals who serve. Um, uh, he's just a, a wonderful man and a wonderful human being. His wife, Anna, is here today. They're a team, we love Anna. They stick together. And uh, I wanna thank Mark for believing in me. I called him up and uh, what, Mark knows a, a New York story and a real story, you know. Uh, I wasn't selling him the Brooklyn Bridge, in other words. So, Mark, I just want to thank you and your wife, Alina, for uh, believing in us. And I'd like to introduce, you know, Wayne Petro, one of my favorite people in the world. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me back there? All right. So first, um, what you don't know about Adrian is she was a co-founder of the USVCC and has been doing this for a long time and dedicating herself to make sure that our wounded men and women are taken care of. When she called me, um, she didn't know I was retired military and she asked if I would help with troops and I did and I gave away a lot of Geico's money to help this, uh, you know, come about. I spent 24 years in the United States Air Force, loved every moment of it. I spent 22 years with Geico. And if you, I, I see some of you taking out calculators or working your fingers, I'm 21 if you're trying to do the math. <laughs> so for the veterans out there, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. And it's an honor for Anna and I to be here. So let me get started for you see, I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. And you might ask, it's a minute, it's 60 seconds. What's the big deal? From a minute comes a good hour. Then a great day and a fantastic week and an incredible month. And before you know it, you're the architect of a lifetime. And it starts with that single minute. What do people need in order to be successful? One attribute is confidence. I personally define confidence as going after Moby Dick in a rowboat 
and bringing the tartar sauce with me. That's confidence. I had a defining moment in 1982 when I was stationed in England Air Force Base, Louisiana. Anna was already asleep. I'm flicking through the channels late. As I'm passing by one, I hear the sports announcer say, you have got to see this to believe it. So of course I stop. It's a Special Olympics. So in this one, one of the parts of the Special Olympics, there was eight beautiful handicapped uh, people, children running the 100 yard dash. At the sound of the gun, they didn't take off in quite a dash, but they were determined to run the race to the finish because they knew they would be spotlighted because they won the race. Except for one little boy who started off when the rest were leaving him and tripped on this track, skinned his knee, laid there in a ball crying while the other seven were running to the finish line. The most amazing thing happened as I'm watching because the people who were running, those seven, were looking back over their shoulder. They heard the crying. They stopped, staggered on the track and looked at each other and they all decided to walk back. They formed a circle around the little boy who was crying. A girl with Down syndrome bent down and kissed him on the forehead and said, this will make you feel better. They grabbed hands and they walked the 100 yards to the finish line to the most cheering that has ever gone on in this stadium. The noise decibel level had never even come close to reaching that. And these precious eight children were beaming because they thought they were being cheered for finishing the race. They just taught the world the ultimate in teamwork, the ultimate in teamwork. Don't be concerned with failure. Failure is not the worst thing in the world. The worst thing is not trying and success does not come to you. You have to go to it. Years ago, an older gentleman was gonna take a cruise on an ocean liner. His wife had asked him for a long time. They've been married for many years. He never got to do it. She passed, he felt guilty, so he's gonna do it. You know how when you're in port, everyone's lining the rails when you're ready to take off? He looked down, saw this young girl leaning on the rail, didn't think anything of it. All of a sudden she falls in. Someone jumps in immediately to rescue the girl. They get the rescue procedures out, the boat comes, the person's holding the girl and you know, keeping afloat. When they pull them up to everyone's astonishment, the hero was this oldest man and he was well past 84. So that night the captain had a speech or had a, a dinner for him and they wanted him to speak. So after dinner, everyone was screaming speech, speech, speech. He looked at the captain, the captain said, you gotta get up. So he got up and he said, there's just one thing I wanna know, who the hell pushed me? <laughs> the lesson there is don't wait to be pushed. The real secret to success is pushing yourself. I'm going to end with one of my most favorite poems. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young military man and woman saluted it and then they stood at ease. I looked at them in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud, with hair cut square and eyes alert. <laughs> They'd stand out in any crowd. I thought, how many men and women like them have fallen through the years? How many died on foreign soil? How many mother's tears? How many pilots planes shot down? How many died at sea? How many foxholes were soldiers' graves? No, freedom is not free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen when a flag had covered a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington, no, no. Freedom is not free. Thank you very much.
And thank you, Wayne. And, uh, and thank you for your service. And thank you for your service on the United, United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce and your, your leadership for the New York Veterans uh, Chamber of Commerce, the new chapter. I wanna thank Geico for being one of the sponsors of this event and a founding member of the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. You can learn more. Uh, we're gonna bring up some of the staff later, uh, Vincent DiNucci, and we're gonna talk about founding memberships. I also wanna thank our other founding members, uh, Ralph Rodriguez from City National Bank. Uh, we're gonna introduce some people from Berkeley College. And I can't tell you enough. Uh, in fact, that might be a good, uh, a good tipping point to bring up uh, Sergeant Vincent DiNucci. He is a graduate of Berkeley College. He's finishing up his MBA. And right now he's the acting executive director of the New York, the new New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And I can't tell you how much Berkeley's doing to help veterans. I can't tell you how talented this sergeant is, but we love Berkeley College, uh, as well as our other sponsors, T-Mobile, uh, Save a Suit, and again, this beautiful historic venue, Soldiers, Sailors, uh, Marine and Airmen's Club in the middle of Midtown Manhattan serving veterans. Uh, Sergeant DiNucci, you wanna come up and tell us what you think and, and, and also what you, uh, your best memories about uh, veterans and services. Uh, thank you, Mark, I appreciate that. I really don't know uh, if I can say anything else after, after Mark. Um, no, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you very much for your service, brothers and sisters out there. I'm looking over the crowd and I see a lot of veterans that, that fought wars that I never saw. And I really, really, truly thank you for your service. Um, I am Vincent DiNucci. I'm the active, uh, acting executive director of the New York Veteran Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the U.S. Veteran Chamber of Commerce, the Greater New York Chamber of Car Commerce, GEICO, and Berkeley College for allowing me to pursue this dream. Uh, I've been deployed to 11 different combat zones. Um, I've seen the worst of people and I've seen the best of people. I remember in 2003 in Baghdad, Iraq, we were hit with mortar fire, small arms fire, RPG fire. And it was probably the worst Christmas Eve I could have remembered. The one thing that I do remember about that Christmas Eve is after we got dusted off, we went back to our, you know, our home away from home. There was a care package this big. Inside that care package, there was beef jerky, a bottle of water, but a card that said, thank you. Now, I was 33 years old when I was in Iraq. In my 33 years, that was the best Christmas present I could have ever received. It wasn't how good the beef jerky tasted. It wasn't how clean the water was. It was those two words, thank you. I can't thank Mr. Jaffe enough for bringing me on board the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. This is a dream. I've talked to Mark several times and a lot of people say that they have a finish line. The finish line is at the end of the race. When they're done, they wanna to get to that finish line. Walking into Mr. Jaffe's office was my finish line. That was the end. I reached my goal. That was my dream to work for the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. But then I saw all of the veteran businesses that are out there and I realized I have a new dream. And this dream is to bring these veterans businesses above and beyond things that they can't even imagine. I want them to feel the way I felt when I opened that box and I saw thank you. I want them to feel the way that I felt when I drank that ice cold water. My job and my life is to serve the, the veterans and the veteran owned businesses in New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Once again, thank you, Mark, Mr. Rojas, everyone here. I, I, I could not have done this without your, without your help and uh, you'll be getting a phone call from me. Please, please, please visit our website. Um, my, all my information's on the website. You can reach me at 212-840-VETS. Thank you for the phone number, Mark. And that's 8387 if you've got one of those newfangled iPhones that you have to touch. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mark. It's, uh, this is a dream come true. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, speaking of uh, Berkeley College, 
Berkeley College brought me here 100%. Um, I was a high school dropout with three weeks left of high, uh, three weeks of high school left. I didn't realize that I was a high school graduate when I came to Berkeley. Berkeley College put me on this path. Berkeley, Co Berkeley College gave me the tools and the information to go forward. And right now I'd like to bring up one of the directors of admissions for Berkeley College. She's gonna let you know a little about the, uh, the wonderful organization Berkeley College is. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna do a quick, uh, quick shot right here. Go over. Right. No, you're you're in it. Oh. Come right here. Uh, I think Show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again, Vincent, for having us here. Uh, first and foremost, I'm super excited to be here, uh, to be with people in general. I think we all appreciate that we were able to physically be uh, invited to this event and to meet new, uh, new people, new faces. I want to start off by thanking every single military aligned student, um, every veteran that served our country. Um, on behalf of Berkeley College, we want to say thank you for everything that you've done. Um, thank you, the family that supported our veterans and our military students uh, in doing what they do for us and for this great nation. So I want to start off with that on this beautiful Veterans Day. I do want to take the opportunity to just say how humbled and proud I am of Vincent. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's great to see the end product of one of our students uh, that we helped start classes and pursue their degree. Um, Vincent is just one of many of our veteran students who uh, start classes at Berkeley and that we help just uh, get to their end goal, to their destination. Um, when you're in the military, you learn so many valuable skills and Berkeley is just what we like to say, you know, the cherry on top because you're already the total package um, and we're just uh, definitely highlighting the skills that you've already learned and helping you take them to the next level to serve other uh, military aligned students. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, thank you again for the invitation. Um, if you have any questions about the college, I'll definitely be here for the rest of the event. Um, one thing that I do wanna highlight, if you're considering continuing your education, make sure that wherever you decide to go, that they respect you, um, not just for who you are, but what, for what you've done as a military aligned student. And how does that uh, respect translate in the admissions process? It's great to meet with a an, an military aligned admissions associate at Berkeley College. Our admissions associate, Mr. Luis Bocanegra is military aligned. It's great to speak to one of your brothers and sisters who know what you've done, what you've been through and can definitely speak to you um, as a battle buddy, I should say, um, when you're going through this process. So make sure that wherever you decide to go respects who for who you are and what you've done for us. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you, Randy, and uh, thank Berkeley College. Uh, their Veterans Center is, is doing amazing things. Uh, they have campuses throughout the greater New York area, White Plains, and they were right on top of uh, pandemic seminars, helping small businesses, and they're certainly helping transition veterans to real life good jobs and thanking those who served and are well-trained and dedicated. And we couldn't ask for anything more. Right now, I'd like to call up, uh, how many people have heard of the 82nd uh, Power Troop, Power Troopers? 82nd from the Army, did I get that? 82nd Airborne. So we have uh, Chris Tassine from the 82nd Airborne and he runs, ironically enough, great name by the way, US Power Troopers Building Services. And not only is he uh, a hero, and uh, we thank you for your service, but we also appreciate you know, being another uh, media partner with our friends at uh, Salem Media, 970 AM. Uh, it's always good to hear you on the station and your passion to help small businesses and entrepreneurs and startups. And again, 
small businesses, entrepreneurs, and startups, and we have relationships between entrepreneurs, small businesses, and that's what this New York Veterans Chamber is about. And again, I forget which mask, but we have, uh, you can tell us more. This is so nice that uh, more people, I think you've donated 10,000 masks to C3, the best variety, to again, the New York Chamber, the United States Veterans Chamber, and uh, people who need it because as I said earlier, uh, even though the vaccine is on its way, um, we're gonna be wearing masks to, because the safety protocols are demanded. So uh, I, Chris, come on up. Thanks, Mark. I'd like to thank you for having me here today. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a uh, former 82nd Airborne Paratrooper. I served in the 82nd Aviation Brigade all the way. Um, I'd like to thank my fellow uh, servicemen, especially these Air Force guys that are in the room today that uh, I'm still standing here, but they did dump me over a few trees every once in a while. So um, some people might know that joke. Um, so a little bit about my business. I uh, served during the Gulf War. I was uh, 21 years old when I was deployed. And uh, what a great, great time I had. Uh, the United States Army made me what I am today. I was 18 years old at the time and I was raised by a single mother because we lost my father at a young age. And the Army gave me directive in life and um, brought me here to where I am today into New York. Uh, uniquely, at the time I was here when the towers fell, I was in Queens and watched that traumatic uh, day to this city. Now, thankfully, uh, through New York and New Jersey, I am a certified disabled veteran-owned small business in New York. Um, through AM79 Radio, as uh, Mr. Jaffe brought up about, I was able to meet him. And then uh, now to meet Vincent and be part of the uh, New York Veteran Chamber of Commerce. I did donate 10,000 masks, but I could not do that without my partners uh, at Medicare Solutions. We are producing masks here in New York out in Amityville. We're creating uh, level three surgical masks, which we donated 10,000 masks today. And also we are creating the N95 mask that is just waiting for a NIOSH certification. I really wanna thank New York State. New York State started a great program for veterans and New Jersey opened it up on the heels of New York. So um, I encourage any veteran that has the passion to own a small business to get involved and get out there. And I look forward to partnering up with Vincent and Mr. Jaffe for the future of veterans in New York and the area. So thank you very much for having me today. And I appreciate everybody's time. So uh, again, thank you. So listen, we're going to open up the bar. We're going to do some socially safe networking discussions. <laughs> The work is just beginning. Um, I mean, we have uh, seen us, the world, the United States fight for freedom. Uh, world War I, 100 years ago. World War II, we committed 16 million people. 1945, how can we all, any of us forget the, uh, the soldier in Times Square grabbing a strange nurse on VJ Day, celebrating victory and our military, all the branches of our military and all our first responders and all our heroes. And today we now realize that our nurses, uh, people that are well-trained and dedicated are helping. Yesterday we were fortunate to be in the Women's Grove and the flagpole in Central Park on 69th Street. We got some great press. We were also streaming live there celebrating women, women that have served from the Hello Girls in the First World War and as we realized, we now have our first female vice commander in chief of uh, the United States of America. And we wish her good luck in her new role, assuming that the, all the recounts and challenges hold our first vice commander in chief. And uh, it, it's good to see uh, uh, granddaughters and daughters realize that they can become what they see, that there are no limits. And we owe this all to our veterans and our first responders and people that have served. So again, I wanna close here by thanking 
Uh, our sponsors, the uh, Soldiers, Sailors, Marine and Airmen's Club, City National Bank, Berkeley College with its fantastic Veteran Center, T-Mobile, uh, and GEICO. And again, our new partner, the United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And as we celebrate and announce streaming live from New York, the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. So I wanna thank you all for co coming. And remember, when you get up from your seats, please wear a mask. We wanna be socially safe, set a good example for our granddaughters and daughters. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I'm Mark Jaffe, the president and CEO of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce and proud advisor, advisory board member to the New York Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you.